Okay. Chapter 16 of the book, Isaiah 53, in the day of the Lord, uh, that God dictated to me. I wrote it for him after he taught me the material. Just as he did with Moses and the Torah. And I think the Jewish, the Orthodox Jews believe that to be the case because he couldn't have known that information any more than I could know the information of this book. There's not a sage or a rabbi on the face of the earth that has ever lived that had this knowledge. It's like a new teaching. It's, look, these are the things you don't know. You don't know what a man divine beings is. You don't know the Holy Spirit is the person. You don't know this. You don't know that. And uh, here are things you got wrong. Here are false teachings and fallacies. Here's man's word instead of God's word. And that's why I'm having trouble getting it published. It looks like an attack, but... You know, God's here. It's his day. And he wants Judaism to welcome in the modern era. Medicine, knowledge, science, information. And, you know, let, let, let the interpretations of antiquity and the men of antiquity in the early Middle Ages, you know, they're good to see, they're good to hear, but what do you think? You really believe it? Rambam's Messianic Era and World Exaltation, which is just an impossibility. It never happened. And yet, Jews for Judaism, their entire commentary on Isaiah, Isaiah 53 being Israel is based on that concept that it's going to happen. And I guess that's when the man of Isaiah 53 becomes Israel. Even today, anti-Semitism is up right now, and I'm here. God's here. There's no Messianic air. There's no resurrection of the dead, as Rambam believed. That's his 13th principle of the fundamental principles of Judaism. Belief. Belief in the resurrection of the dead. Well, but we don't believe that anymore. Science and medicine tell us that's not going to happen. But it's supposed to be a sign I'm here. I mean, you know, and that's still taught today. It has to go. And that's why God reckons with and dismisses all rabbis when I'm here, Moshe. And he's here to deliver the covenant. And they're not going to get into the scroll of remembrance. They will not see the Jewish heaven God is creating for the people in the scroll of the day of the Lord, which would begin in 48 and probably end at my death. Unless they take my teachings of this book and they start teaching it themselves to those that follow them. Straighten out the things they've been teaching that God just shakes his head at and stop doing it. You're going to have to get humble and a little humility. I was wrong about 53. Toby would be saying to 66,000 followers. I don't know how many Jews for Judaism is, but I suspect it's a similar number. Making it very difficult for God to get to Israel. Because you can't tell people it's not Israel. It's me. It's Moshe. It's me. It describes me. And I read their commentaries, and, and Toby is, is, is ten times worse than Jews for Judaism. It's just a, an absurdity. And uh, you can find my video on chapter 23 for that. And for Jews for Judaism, chapter uh, 24. Uh, and the fact Jesus does not fit a single verse of 53, save one, that's uh, chapter 22. Because <laughs> I saw Isaiah 53 in the book, Isaiah 53 in the day of the Lord. He, 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 he had the entire Hebrew Bible written. He, he, he had each prophet. He lit upon them. His spirit did. And that means he did also. Uh, and spoke to them. That's how he speaks to people. And uh, dictated, commanded, directed them to write their individual books. Isaiah wrote Isaiah. He was a man in divine being. Malachi wrote Malachi. And he's a man in divine being. Moshe, a man in divine being. So that would be me. I'm still a man. I still feel like I'm key. But they're here. But it's not like they do any special, 
It's not like I've been treated special by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, how can I ask him, man, why don't you flip that light off? He said he'd probably throw me out of the bed in his power. I know better. John the Baptist was not Elijah as Jesus claimed. Christianity believes Jesus was and is God, who was sacrificed as the unblemished Lamb of God for the sins of all who believe in him, accept him as his Savior, and believe in the resurrection. Just as unblemished lambs were sacrificed for unintentional sins in the animal atonement and worship laws of Leviticus, God had his prophet Jeremiah write the new covenant with sin forgiveness for a time to come in Jeremiah 31. Had his prophet Isaiah describe his righteous servant in Isaiah 53 and had his prophet Malachi write that the angel of the covenant that you desire is already coming and the messenger of the covenant is being sent to clear the way for the Lord who is Elijah. And what else can Elijah do? Well, he's been in heaven for 2,000 years, right? Of course, it's not the same Elijah, but uh, he taught me everything Elijah would know. And I can talk to that angel because that's the angel of God's presence, the Holy Spirit, and he's here right now within me and filling this room. If we were all in the same room and I was giving a speech, everyone, everyone in there would be in the presence of God and the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. Their presence would in surround your bodies, head to toe. The difference with me, and by the way, that's the Shekinah. The difference with me, they flow through me. They don't surround me. It's as though I'm part of the Shekinah. It's, it's, you see, these are things the rabbis don't know. You know, this is a revelation, and that's supposed to be what Moshiach does. And I've heard it, he will open up the Torah. Well, we hardly do anything with the Torah. God says they have picked that thing to pieces. They, they've gone over it and found everything you could possibly find. We focus mainly on the prophets. A little Torah here and there. A uh, little bit of the writings. Okay. So that, that just backs up what I was saying. All these different... you have, you got to put four books together to find the day of the Lord. It's got nothing to do with the Jewish people being without sin, or trying to be, as uh, I've heard Skobak say it, Jews for Judaism, Rabbi Skobak. And this is Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, I am sending my messenger to clear the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall come to his temple suddenly. As for the angel of the covenant that you desire, he is already coming. Now here's what's interesting. Jesus uses that verse, Malachi 3, verse 1, to describe his cousin John the Baptist to be Elijah. But he leaves out the angel of the covenant. Didn't mention the angel of the covenant of sin forgiveness of the Jewish people. Had to leave that out. He needed to mention that somebody was going to clear the way for him. And he knew Elijah was a part of of Malachi 3. <laughs> but if he's as smart as everybody said he was, teaching at synagogues when he was 12 years old, he knew what was in that covenant. And that's why I got left out. Or the writer of that particular gospel left it out. There are only two specific covenants to come in this day of the Lord. The new covenant was sin forgiveness from Jeremiah. Uh, must come with the angel of the covenant that you desire for the reason the covenant of friendship comes with God's servant David. That's what he calls him, my servant David, a shepherd. That's what he calls Moshe. He doesn't call him a king. He call, he's a teacher, and that's me. And what am I teaching? The book he dictated to me and everything in it. Jesus said, this is from uh, Luke, Chapter 7, verse 27 of the New Testament. Jesus said, This is he, John the Baptist in brackets, of whom it is written, Behold, 
I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. I guess thee is him. Jesus is saying that John was clearing the way for Jesus as the Lord. Now they had a temple back in the day of Jesus and God was in it. Now Malachi 3, this verse he's using, God says I'm going to return to my temple. Which, according to the covenant of friendship, he knows it isn't here right now, but we're going to get it built. You have to, Israel. You don't have any choice. And why your rabbis don't teach that, I have no idea. It's too clear to miss. But it does conflict with the Messianic era. you got to talk about other destruction. As a son of God for God or God incarnate, and a renowned teacher of the scripture at synagogues. As a young boy, Jesus knew that the Jewish people were without sin if John was Elijah. He's the messenger of the new covenant. That is why he did not mention the angel of the covenant. He cannot die for the sins of the Jewish people if they are sin free. God forgives sin by his written word, not human sacrifice. The time to come of the new covenant is when the land blooms again and when the city, Jerusalem, shall be rebuilt as it is today for the Lord's return. A time to come when the Jewish people are never uprooted or overthrown again as long as they build that temple. Between 68 and 70 common era, the Jewish people revolted against Rome and were defeated, murdered, crucified, and forced to flee the lands of Abraham, beginning the diaspora, the Roman dispersal. The Jewish people were overthrown and uprooted after the death of John the Baptist. So see, he couldn't be Elijah, because that's not going to happen once Elijah's here, most particularly if we get a temple built. It doesn't fit. Historically, it doesn't fit. The story doesn't fit, based on the historical fact of the revolts and a defeat by Rome. Okay, next up, the great chapter 17, the greatest lie and deception in the history of mankind is in the Christian New Testament, spoken by Jesus himself. Hmm. Huh. Of course, he's a myth. But that's what was written in the gospel. Oh, I'll get to it. 